Welcome to our first lecture on the principles of the Constitution. A principle is a main idea, and our United States Constitution has five main ideas or principles. Our first principle that we're going to discuss is called popular sovereignty. Now, popular doesn't mean um, that people like it or that it's you know famous. Popular means the people, the population, the populace. So uh, popular is the people, sovereignty is power, and um, power and authority. So people have the authority in the United States. Based on the preamble to the Constitution, it's clear that the power and authority of the government comes from the American people. Read that first line there, we the people of the United States. So the power comes from the people. The second principle of the United States Constitution is called limiting the power of government. And um, this should be very clear to you by now that the Founding Fathers were very afraid of a government that was too powerful. They had that under the King of England and Parliament. They did not want it again. Um, they didn't want the, the government to have too much power, and so this concept of limited government was put into place. Under this idea, the national government does not have absolute authority. Instead, the people do. Uh, also, the government may only do those things that the people have given it the power to do. Um, it's very clear in the Constitution what the government can do and cannot do. And if the government wants more power, they have to go to the people to get it. And the, they get it from the people by voting or a variety of different ways. Uh, under the government, the government itself must obey its own laws. And no one is above the law. So it's illegal to murder somebody in the United States. And even if you're the president or a senator or a judge, you cannot murder somebody. You can't break the law. And we've seen our politicians get in trouble for laws. Uh, for breaking laws. And that's a good thing. It shows that nobody, even if you are the powerful people, nobody is above the law. And finally, the national government must follow the Constitution. It cannot enforce the Constitution upon us as citizens and not follow it itself. Um, so it has to follow the three branches. It has to, the, the guidelines of the three branches, it only has certain powers that are written in the Constitution, and uh, basically that's, those are all uh, goals that the Constitution has to limit its power, because a, a powerful government is an abusive government, and our founders, they knew that and they recognized that. The third principle that we're going to talk about today is sharing of power. Under the Constitution, states had to give up some of their power to the new national government. Before the Constitution, the states had the most power in this country. Uh, they had the power to make money. They had the power to have a post office. They had a lot of power, and people looked to their states as their leaders um, rather than the national government under the Articles of Confederation. Now, this division of power, where states and the federal government share power, is called federalism. And the important feature of federalism is that the, unite, the, the national government, or the federal government, actually is higher, more powerful than the state governments. And so there are certain powers that the federal government has that the state government does not have. And there are other powers that the state governments have that the federal government does not have, but those powers are typically uh, less or weaker powers. So let's take a look at this, um, this list right here. The national government only can maintain an armed force or the armed forces. Only the federal government can establish a postal system and the money. The national government sets standards for weights, measures, copyrights, and patents, they regulate interstate commerce, they make laws of citizenship, and they also can declare a war. Now those are huge, very important powers. And state governments, they deal more with their local issues like schools and they're creating their local governments. Um, they can determine how regulations are generated for marriage and divorce, and they also can 
also can regulate intrastate commerce. That means buying and selling inside their states. So um, the powers are quite separate. And if you, as you see in the middle, there are also powers called concurrent powers that are shared between state and state governments and the federal government.